nice to meet you, Kate Delaney. Yes, hi, Kate. Nice to meet you, too. Yeah, thanks for coming on the show. We're ready to go. This will be fun. We'll talk about uh, things that people just don't understand about, about Sikhs and things that have happened, okay? Okay, is it okay if I record it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, a abs absolutely. And, we, you know, we can send you a copy, too, as well. Oh, want to oh great. If you have a good copy, why don't we send that to you? That would be super. Okay. I think Matt will do it. Okay, here we go. We're ready. Welcome back to America tonight. You know, in the show, or on the show anyway, we try to, as I say, invite everybody's opinion into the parlor, whether you're right of right, left of left, don't label yourself anything. And labels sometimes can be dangerous. We've seen that in the past. In the wings is Gersant Singh. He's got a book out called Confessions of an American Sikh. And he talks about his story about dealing with all kinds of things that happened in his culture and then coming to America and what that was like. And we see some of the things uh, certainly that have happened. We've got about one million Sikhs, give or take, in the U.S. who are definitely missing understood. A lot of people don't even understand what it means to be a Sikh as far as the religion goes. Krasan, thanks so much for coming on America tonight. Thank you for inviting me. So let's talk about uh, the beginning. Let's talk about for you uh, when you first made the transition coming to the United States. Of course we had 9-11 and I think when 9-11 hit and, and I mean let's just say it, anybody wearing a turban all of a sudden you were misunderstood and you were labeled. Did you find that happening? Yes, very much so. I mean, it's a very good question. I'm glad you asked it. Um, first of all, I, I'm, I don't know if you're aware, but I grew up um, in an average American family in Southern California, and I was a Christian at the time. So I converted to Sikhism about 35 years ago. So um, I just wanted to make that clear. And, and then uh, to address your question about um, if I uh, ran into problems after 9-11, um, yes, I mean, I had many people, um, you know, heckling me for wearing a, um, uh, a turban and also uncut hair with my long beard. I was very um, uh, visible, if you will, and um, for many Sikhs this has been a problem because um, some people uh, mistake us for being um, uh, the Taliban or terrorists and things like that, but in fact, uh, the Sikh religion is the fifth uh, largest religion in the world, and we believe in one God, and we are uh, peaceful people. Uh, we have um, homes and families and and uh, uh, regular jobs, if you will, and uh, so we're very much part of the American fabric. But you didn't find, was that happening before 9-11? Was it not happening very much when you first converted from Christianity and then went to did that happen initially in the beginning, or no? Was it more about, okay, now what happened in New York and what happened at the Pentagon and in, in the field has just set off uh, sort of a firestorm in the United States, and that's the way it's been? I had some of it. I, I definitely encountered some discrimination um, before that time. In fact, I tried to get in the U.S. Army in 1982, and... Um, there had been exemptions for Sikhs um, initiated by President Harry Truman in 1948, um, and Sikhs have served proudly in the Canadian, the UK, and also in the U.S. Army and up until about 1980 or so. And then when Reagan came into office, um, I think there was a lot of pressure uh, from some of the right-wing groups that didn't want to have um, other uh, religions in the U.S. Army. So um, uh, Reagan did away with that exemption. Uh, for Sikhs that was given by Truman. Uh, there were some Sikhs that were already in there, but they were grandfathered in and able to serve. Um, so I tried to join the U.S. Army in 1982, uh, went down the enlistment um, center with my uh, turban and uh, beard and kirpan there, and um, uh, was basically rejected. They, they said that I couldn't join. Um, the excuses they gave were things like, uh, that a gas mask wouldn't uh, fit properly over over the beard, but uh, uh, it's not the case. Um, there was a Sikh in the U.S. Army who was actually teaching chemical warfare, and uh, they had commended him. But So the U.S. Army has been um, discriminatory um, even up to this day. Um, they, they allow some exemptions on that. So to answer your question, um, 
there there was discrimination definitely before 9-11, but it became more pronounced, I, I think, in the public because of the visibility, like I said, of the um, of of our faith uh, wearing the turban and beard, and um, the um, uh, kind of look alike, if you will, of of some of the Taliban and these people in in the Middle East that are terrorists. Yeah. Well, here's something I think people wouldn't understand about the Sikh religion, about one of the tenets of it, anyway. How do you feel about guns? Well, I'm a very big uh, supporter of. Uh, training with firearms and learning safety. Um, I definitely feel like uh, uh, guns and uh, firearms are part of the Sikh tradition. Uh, you look at our Sikh history, we have a strong history of um, fighting for rights of um, individuals and also the rights of other people to, to um, uh, live and uh, practice their religion the way they feel they want to. In India, uh, the Sikhs fought the Mughals uh, for centuries against um, their oppression. Again, they were oppressing the Hindus there and trying to convert them to um, the uh, Muslim faith. So the Sikhs were the only ones who stood up and said, you know, this is not right. Um, and uh, we used all kinds of weapons. So uh, it's part of our history. In fact, we are uh, required to wear a small dagger. It's called a kirpan as uh, part of our, our religious tenets of faith, if you will. So um, I've recently filed a lawsuit against the state of California um, saying that their laws uh, that regulate um, these uh, weapons that are so-called like assault uh, rifles, I've said that it's really against our uh, faith, um, or against our faith to regulate them, and we should be able to carry um, these kind of weapons. Um, you know, they, there was that shooting there in Wisconsin. Uh, at a Sikh temple, you may have heard. I'm sure you heard about it. Where six Sikhs, oh, yeah. yeah, six Sikhs were killed by um, a gunman there, and he was carrying a semi-automatic pistol uh, that carried 19 rounds in the magazine. And so, I think that if a Sikh had been there, or anybody for that matter, with an assault rifle, had been uh, trained and um, had had that available to them uh, readily, either in their car or in the uh, temple there itself, that they could have stopped that guy. And uh, so I am really making a big push that um, uh, we uh, Sikhs uh, defend ourselves and, and learn um, uh, f about firearms. And I've gotten a concealed weapons license here in California uh, so I can carry a handgun whatever, wherever I go, and I do that. I'm trying to train other Sikhs, and I've been coaching a, a junior rifle team uh, here in Yuba City also. I think it's a really important thing that we've lost over the years um, is this idea of being able to train with weapons. It's become it's become so on PC to have you know weapons and train with them, but really it's just a fear. And if we let these people who have the guns, like the criminals and the and the hate uh, mongers who have have these guns, if they if we let only them have the guns, we're going to lose that battle. We need to we need to train as uh, citizens of the United States with weapons and get back to this um, uh, uh, training that we used to have with firearms. I, I grew up in a, a family in the 60s where uh, my father was in the Marine Corps for 14 uh, years, and he, he trained my brother and I to use firearms. And I, in Boy Scout camp, we, we used firearms and trained with 22 caliber rifles. I went on to compete in the Olympics, not in the Olympics, but it uh, tried out for the Olympics and uh, shot some national records in small bore uh, rifle competition. So um, it was really part of it. And you never heard about these kind of um, shootings uh, with, with people that were in the, these NRA clubs and uh, shooting programs. Um, you just never heard about it. But now, over the years, um, people have gotten away from that kind of training uh, in um, uh, shooting. And I think that people, they don't have any respect for firearms anymore, and they don't understand them, so they just fear them. So um, the only people left that have them uh, are these people that are nuts. And uh, so we need to, uh, like I said, we need to get back to that kind of uh, training with firearms. Yeah, I so agree with you so, very well that I love the idea that you're working with the junior, junior rifle team and you went through the process of the concealed weapon. As you said, you said what I say all the time, it's about knowing how to shoot, having respect for the weapons, getting it, being comfortable with it, responsible ownership, don't you think? Absolutely, absolutely. That's a very good point. 
um, I, like I said, I grew up um, in a family where my father was in the Marine Corps for 14 years. My mother was also uh, a shooter. And I, I still have the same pistol that um, she shot with in the 1940s. <laughs> and uh, so um, my father, I remember him laying two pistols on the bed and he said, okay, now this is how we treat these weapons, with respect, and you always treat a weapon like it's loaded. So I grew up from a very young age. I, I uh, went to a military academy, this Harding Military Academy in Glendora, where we also had a rifle team. And we learned discipline. We learned respect for for the um, rules of society, and, and, and we learned teamwork and comradeship also, uh, working with other um, young people and adults um, in these shooting teams. Um, like, for example, that, that Adam, um, Lanza. that Lanza, yeah, who, who shot the um, school kids there in um, Connecticut, uh, he was just a, a hermit and, and uh, shut himself up. Um, I think that if he'd been part of a uh, NRA rifle team uh, or shooting club, that he would have learned proper use of weapons, and and the and certainly the the coaches and people there could have uh, spotted any kind of mental uh, problems that he had. But he was just um, a loner, um, and so again, you won't see this kind of uh, activity of, uh, with these junior shooters that I've been coaching and uh, that I grew up with, uh, like happened with Adam uh, there. So. Again, I, I encourage this uh, um, uh, this training with uh, weapons and and people familiarize themselves with them. You know, like in Switzerland, they have a requirement that everybody should have a everybody should have an assault rifle. And I think, yeah. frankly, that should be the way it is here too. We should train with people, and people. Sh you know, I I'm a big believer in tr training and going to the military because. You know, like my father, he said it was the best thing that ever happened to him. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. yeah, it's really, we've really gotten away from that kind of uh, training and discipline and, and learning about how we can serve our country and how we can, how we can be better Americans like that. Uh, I agree, and that's what they do in Israel. We're out of time. Krasan Singh, pick up his book, Confessions of an American. Steve, thanks so much. Thank you, Kate. Okay. Thanks, that was great. We'll have you on again. We'll get, I'll get you a copy of... Of, uh, of this appearance, okay? Okay, great. Yeah, do you have my email address? Yeah, I think I've got it on the, um, on the thing Christy said. Give it to me yeah. just in case. Sure, it's G-U-R-U-S-A-N-T at hotmail.com. At hotmail.com. You got it. I'll send you a copy. Thank you, Kate. Okay, have a good day. Thanks. Thanks, okay. Chris. Have a good day. You bye too. Bye-bye.